the city of Berlin, capital of Germany, until the defeat of the Nazis in 1945. It's a unique reminder of the Second World War because British, French, American, and Russian troops are still stationed here. And it's unique because of the wall that cuts right across the city, dividing the communist east from the capitalist west. The wall that became 20 years old in August. West Berlin is completely surrounded by the wall, cut off like an island deep inside East Germany. It relies on the air, land, and rail links to the west for its supplies and its survival. Every day, around the clock, troops of the Western Allies, Britain, France, and the United States, keep up their watch along the wall at the crossing points. Nothing exciting is likely to happen because the wall has been repeatedly strengthened over the past 20 years and daring escapes across it have become few and far between. The observations have become more a ritual, part of the unending war of nerves. The barrier is often two walls and between them barbed wire electrified fences, tripwire alarms, and dog runs. And along the total length of 165 kilometers, the ceaseless patrols. This is a British Army patrol, which means that we are in the British section of Berlin. Any security incident happening here will be the immediate responsibility of the British authorities. The most photographed section of the wall runs right through the city center. But there is a lot more, not as dramatic to look at, dividing West Berlin in a rough semicircle from East Germany. It often runs through woods and countryside, but it's still a formidable barrier, the most efficient man-made frontier in the world. These confrontations are typical of the Cold War, the battle of ideologies between East and West that has always stayed short of real warfare. Propaganda is rife. One side calls the wall a scandal, an offense against humanity. The other side calls it the anti-fascist protection barrier, a defender of freedom. And it was the East Germans who celebrated the wall's anniversary with parades and speeches. Berlin has been described as a barometer of East-West relations. Any rise in international tension would be felt here first. In the extreme example, any military aggression over Berlin could lead to full-scale war. That's why the alarm bells began ringing furiously in Western capitals on the Sunday morning of August 13, 1961. Groups of East German workers and soldiers began digging up roadways and putting up barriers across the 193 streets that linked the Russian sector with the three Western ones. Berlin seemed to be heading for its worst post-war crisis. The immediate effect was that many Berliners found themselves cut off from friends and relatives. The long-term effects, no one could guess at. Western units were at once put on the alert, but they knew East German and Soviet armies were also at the ready. The barricades were clearly a gross violation of the Four Power Agreement on Berlin, but this also denied the Western forces any right to move across the sector boundary. They were ordered to take no action they had to watch with a mixture of anger and frustration as the wall slowly grew. Then followed a spate of dramatic escapes to the west by disillusioned East Germans. The wall brought an end to the flood of people heading west in search of a better life. In 1961, they were leaving at the rate of 16,000 a month through Berlin. 
the wall was necessary to preserve East Germany as a nation. But the wall was proving to be a great propaganda weapon for the West. There was a series of ugly incidents when would-be escapers were shot and killed by East German border guards. The victims became martyrs in the West, especially Peter Fechter, an 18-year-old building worker who bled to death, unattended, only yards away from angry and helpless onlookers. Since the wall was built, 72 people are known to have died trying to cross it. But what is the East German explanation for the wall? The famous horses on top of the Brandenburg Gate face east. Historically, this could be called symbolic of German expansionist aims to the east. But in 1961, it rather symbolized East Germany's turning its back on the west. Any lingering hopes of German reunification at this time suddenly disappeared completely. More than anything, the wall marked a new start for East Germany. Its borders were now secure, and the demoralizing drain of manpower had been stopped. Sporting successes helped to create a new mood of confidence. East Berlin is no longer afraid of comparisons with its western half, and is proud of its S-Bahn railway system, which curiously still serves West Berlin. Over in West Berlin, the right-wing press tends to reject all things communist out of hand, especially the wall. The events of 1961 had also been an affront to West Berlin's mayor at the time, socialist Willy Brandt. But in retrospect, it's apparent that the wall helped to guide him, when chancellor, toward his policy of Ostpolitik, improving relations with the communists. He says he was very depressed by the Western Allies' impotence to stop his city being split down the middle. He concluded that a new approach was needed, and the initiative must come from the Germans themselves. The East Germans responded well to the Brandt Initiative, and with the added effects of the 1975 Helsinki Agreement on European security, relations have improved considerably. But sadly, the wall still claims its victims, as witnessed by the row of memorial crosses by the old Reichstag building. Marionetta Dikorski was the last one in November 1980. She was two years younger than the wall. Her boyfriend describes what happened on that fateful day. He, Marionetta, and a friend Peter used three ladders in the escape. They had to climb over two walls and an electrified fence. The plan seemed to be going well, but after crossing the fence in the middle, Marionetta stumbled. She had touched a tripwire, and this had set off an alarm. Border guards then spotted them and started shooting. The girl was hit, and her companions were unable to help her. After describing the escape attempt, the young East German went on to say he had become desperate to come west and was ready to risk the danger of being killed. He had been lucky. His political objections to the communist regime had grown so strong that he had finally concluded, I don't want to live like this anymore. Modern day graffiti, paint sprayed messages, make similar points suggesting many East Germans would leave if they had the chance to, and that communist rule means a negation of freedom. The communists, of course, see things differently. They say their people have to be protected against Western spies and provocateurs, and they have their own memorial to defenders of freedom who have died along the borders with the West. For from the communist viewpoint, the real threat to freedom comes from capitalists and militarists. The East German soldiers killed on border duty died fighting that threat.
Every country needs its heroes, and in the East German history books, there are 13 of them. The West assumes most died in confrontations with would-be escapers, for its border patrols have strict orders not to shoot into the East under any circumstances. Fortunately, casualties have now diminished. The wall's so strong now, few people try to escape. West Berliners are determined to keep up the city's cheerful image, but the overall picture is not too bright. Many young people move away to West Germany, and today almost a quarter of the two million population are aged 65 or over. And more than 10% are foreign guest workers, mainly Turks, Pakistanis, and Sri Lankans. There is also a severe housing crisis, which has led to violent clashes between squatters and police and always the reminders that Berlin is a freak city where outside powers hold stubbornly to the rights of victors in a war of long ago. And the indignity of having to go through the tightly controlled border crossings in order to visit relatives on the other side. The East Germans now allow every West Berliner 30 visits a year. East Berliners can visit, even stay in the West, but only if they're of pensionable age. And so, after 20 years, the Berlin Wall has become one of the enduring features of an ever-changing city. But it still means vastly different things to different people. President Reagan marked the anniversary by calling the wall a symbol of the imprisonment of millions of Germans under communist rule. A Russian report called it a shield against capitalist subversion, whose correctness has been proven by history. However it is defined, the wall is clearly here to stay. The city is likely to be divided as long as the two German states and the two halves of Europe are divided, which will mean many more anniversary celebrations for the Berlin Wall in both halves of the city in the years ahead.